injuries. Dashboard, dashboard hits the knee and the femur get a femur head gets out from the acetabulum. And the complications, as we already said, myositis ossificans, sciatic nerve injury, osteoarthritis, and recurrent dislocations. So this is the mechanism of injury to the sciatic nerve. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't share my screen. So this is the sciatic nerve injury mechanism. So as you see, the patient was sitting uh, on the uh, driving seat and the femur gets out from the acetabular cavity and make the stretching out of the sciatic nerve right behind the neck of the femur. So anterior, anterior dislocation we will not cover because it is very rare injury. So let's talk about the injuries around the knee joint. So in, in the knee joint, uh, we can cover the fractures as well as the ligament injuries and also the meniscal injuries. So let's start from the fractures. And we can have the fractures in the proximal the distal femur in proximal tibia. Okay, so... Mm, there is some waiting room. If anyone is waiting, please um, turn up your microphone and then ask me to include him because I cannot see the, the second screen here. So <clears throat> uh, there is now this classification. So what do you have to know in this uh, supra, uh, supracondylar fractures? of the femur. It can be Y-shape, it can be V-shape, it can be you know, unicondylar fracture, it can be the bicondylar fracture, okay? Unicondylar fractures are the fractures which include only the one condyle, this uh, bicondylar fractures, both condyles. The clinical feature is the same signs of a fracture. Can you see? Same sign of fractures, deformity, Unable to move and hemarthrosis, of course, because it is intraarticular fracture. X-ray shows us the final diagnosis. Treatment, it's non-surgical treatment and surgical treatment. Surgical treatment includes these types of fixation. Okay, this is the uh, screws, blades and plates. So let's go to the uh, more difficult part of the uh, knee injuries, which includes the soft soft tissue injuries, injuries to the knee, like uh, uh, knee ligament injuries, uh, can be medial collateral ligament injury, lateral collateral ligament injury, uh, anterior cruciate, posterior cruciate, ligament injury, and of course, meniscal, meniscal injuries. Mechanism of injury can be the direct, indirect forces. Usually it's indirect force, lateral, uh, collateral ligament because of the varus force, medial collateral ligament because of var valgus force, and anterior cruciate, posterior cruciate ligaments are usually the valgus virus and plus rotational force. Usually it happens to the people uh, who is uh, occupying with a active sport. Usually the patient's age is young. See, this is the medial collateral ligament. It's injured because of valgus force. So uh, it can be classified into the degrees, first, second, and third degree. Of course, the less degree is less severe. More degree is more severe. Then uh, cruciate ligaments. Cruciate ligaments can be, uh, sorry, let's say collateral ligaments. It's still collateral ligaments. Uh, tests can be valgus and varus tests. And 
the, uh, instrumental investigation can be CT, MRI, and ultrasound. Usually the CT is not very uh, informative because CT is for the bone, but CT we usually use in case in case avulsion fracture, avulsion fracture dislocation, now yeah, fracture injury. And the uh, stress radiograph, valgus and valgus. See, this picture is showing the valgus stress test and the right hand side, valgus stress test. The treatment includes uh, in, in treatment depends on the degrees, okay? If it's the first degree, we don't have to make the surgery. We can use just cold, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and wet rest and so on. But the second degree can um, uh, require some fixators, okay? Like splints, uh, casts, and so on. The third degree, the constructive surgery, okay? The third degree, which means it's almost complete injury to the ligament, which means that the least ligament is not uh, does not exist. So we have to completely remove the um, debris and put the another one. All cases we have to make the transfer. Uh, cruciate ligaments are more complex, more difficult because these are these ligaments are located into the joint intraarticularly. And we cannot see, we cannot uh, use the ultrasound to uh, diagnose the cruciate ligament. That's why we use the MRI. Okay, X-ray is uh, can be normal. Let's talk about the patella. Patella is a kneecap and it can be also be fractured. But uh, the patella injury has a different mechanism. And it can usually it's a direct injury, direct. If it's in uh, indirect force, then it's case of uh, avulsion injury. Suppose this is a kneecap. And uh, this is the uh, quadriceps muscle, and this is the ligament. And they pull apart, and the, the uh, kneecap can be avulsed, pull, pull apart. The classification can be different, and displace, displace, lower pole, upper pole, vertical, osteochondral, and, and so on, community fractures. Uh, diagnosing of the patella is easy because the patella is under under the skin, right under the skin, and we can easily palpate and um, see the injury, right? Because as we already said, the mechanism of injury of the patella is usually direct force, hitting the ground, hitting something, something solid with the knee. Uh, anterior posterior lateral and the x-ray once the patella is the bone and it can be small pieces of the bone we use we use uh, uh, CT scan CT scan is very good for for patella then uh, treatment. Treatment can be non-surgical and surgical. Non-surgical, do you remember the first first uh, uh, classification? It was undisplaced. Undisplaced fracture can be treated with non-surgical treatment. And displaced fracture. Displaced fracture usually treated by surgical method. And the skin is normal, and so okay. The techniques. What techniques can we use for fixation of the patella? Patella is not easy to fix because 
Uh, from one side, we have the quadriceps muscle, which pull the patella outside, I mean the upper side, and the ligament, patellar ligament on the other side, and pulling apart mechanism is dangerous. And that's why we have to uh, contradict to these forces. That's why we have to use a good technique to fix the patella. Wiring technique, screw fixation, and uh, but, um, plate fixation. With there are some spe special plates for the patella. Um, okay, these are the combination of the screw fix and uh, uh, combination of the K wire fixation and tension bent wire fixation. This is how it looks on the real X ray. So uh, sometimes if it is not possible to fix the patellar bone, we have to remove the patella, completely remove the patella and we can uh, suture the patellar tendon to quadriceps tendon. Complications can be delayed union, non-union, and so on. So next is the TBL plateau fracture, which is also one of the dangerous fractures in the body because patellar plateau is a articular surface. If it's if the articular surface is involved to the fracture, then it is uh, causing the big problem issues to the patient. Okay, on this picture, you can see the type of the injuries. You see the medial condyle, lateral condyle. You can see the compression injury and so on. This classification. Um, don't have to cover this classification. Uh, classification. No Shaskas classification. Okay. The, the, just take the anatomical classification. Anatomical classification is the medial condyle, lateral condyle, and comminuted. That's usually enough. Then clinical feature can include the all signs of the fractures and uh, instrumental investigation. Instrumental, which includes the CT scan, X-ray, CT scan is a good one. And treatment is to restore the articular congruity. Do you remember when we just started the uh, plateau, plateau fracture? Then we um, talk about uh, articular surface. Articular surface should be glide, should be smooth. Otherwise, it can cause the problem later. The, the treatment goal can be art, rest, restoration, articular congruity, then alignment, then stability, and function of the knee joint. Uh, we have to lean to the classification. So the first type is the less complicated type. The last type is the most complicated type. Of course, you have to depend, you have to uh, tell the diagnosis. The treatment depends on the classification. If the fracture is not severe, not displaced, you don't even have to make the any fixation of the uh, fracture with um, surgical technique. No, just non-surgical is enough. But if you have an injury to the uh, plateau with the displacement, of course, you can use, you have to use the screws and plates and so on. 
So in this X-ray picture, you can see the injury to the plateau, but after the treatment, you can see the combination of the screw plate fixation and some ex extra screws on the lateral plateau. This is a more difficult treatment. Uh, it seems like the lateral plateau goes down, the compressed, depressed, and this plateau should be going upward and uh, no plate can be fixed because we have the extra fracture, lower third, uh, upper third of the tibia and it's com comminuted fracture. Of course, the plate cannot fix it. That's why we need some external stabil stabilizer and that's why they use them. It is Zara's technical fixation. Some newer technique, uh, newer methods can be arthroscopy, but arthroscopy unfortunately is not fixing the problem from inside. But arthroscopy is like an assistance to the main fixation technique because by the arthroscopy we can see the position of the uh, plateau from inside of the bone, okay, inside of the joint. We go into the knee joint with the arthroscope and we with the camera can see what is the position of the plateau while we fix from the outside, okay? And uh, post-operative treatment can be including the splinting and weight bearing should be delayed for some time until it get until it gets fused to each other. And complications can be vari variety of complications. Mechanism of injury can be also different. Sorry, sorry. So it seems like we started the new new topic and here is the meniscus. I, I promise uh, meniscus is going to be uh, difficult, the, the last difficult topic, but the late next uh, topics are going to be easier, like the shaft, the shaft, the um, tibia and fibula and the ankle. Because meniscus is not a bone and meniscus is not a joint. And then sometimes the students and even doctors confuse uh, when it comes to treatment of the meniscus. So this, uh, I hope you know what means meniscus and uh, it's like it's having this spe special function. Function? Yeah, let's see, I'm 21 students. And uh, see. So what meniscus us usually get injured? Usually the 90% of the cases, medial meniscus, medial. And this is because of the anatomy of the condyles, anatomy of meniscus, anatomy of the joint capsule. Mechanism can be different, twisting, uh, weight bearing, even, usually it's sport injuries and young, young adults. Classifications can be different and this picture is showing the classification. Number one is longitudinal, longitudinal. Number two is horizontal. Number three can be uh, oblique or radial. Okay, oblique, it's going obliquely through the meniscus. And here on the picture, you can see the uh, medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. And you may ask why medial meniscus get injured more commonly. The simple answer is that because medial meniscus is fixed to the capsule, okay? And it's less mobile. If the meniscus may not move laterally and medially, in this case, it has more chance of the injury. But the lateral meniscus can move lateral. You compress, you jump, lateral move goes lateral. So longitudinal tears can be different. Bucket handle, okay. So this is the picture showing everything what was written down on the previous slideshow. So see, uh, sometimes longitudinal tear can be very long, very long from the posterior horn up to anterior horn. At this case, we have a big flap on the middle can move forward and backward and 
cause some problem. And the problem's name is the block. Blocking of the knee is the one of the specific symptoms for the meniscus. Horizontal tears can also cause some problems, but usually it's a long-term problems. Oblique tears are very common injuries, and radial tears are common injuries, and this is the, usually the uh, degeneration of the meniscus. Okay, let's go to the clinical feature. Usually the patient is not able to uh, move lower uh, on the step stair on the stairs uh, down to the stairs is more painful than going up to the on, on the stairs. And ultrasonography gives us some uh, confused. confused um, picture, but the final diagnosis we have because of the MRI, MRI is very good for soft tissues. Uh, we are getting to the end, please don't worry. In all cases, chronic cases or degeneration cases, we have the same problems, but when the patient is doing the more physical activities, more pain, okay? So this, uh, you don't have to cover this part because this is a, a, a post-Soviet Union, post-Soviet Union symptoms, okay? You may even not uh, using these symptoms in order to diagnose your patients, uh, your patients meniscal injuries, okay? Uh, but uh, in the uh, Western countries, in the uh, in India and Pakistan, they use another uh, uh, symptoms to diagnose, and these are um, McMurray test, McMurray, and Apley test, and your practice class teacher will show you uh, in the class. Treatment can be uh, non-surgical and surgical, of course. Non-surgical treatment includes uh, just uh, fixation of the knee joint for some time, and surgical treatment includes, of course, arthro arthroscopy. Please do not make arthrotomy and do not suggest the patient to do the arthrotomy because this is all technique. We don't use it right now. It is more it's causing more problems than um, treatment. These are the ports for the patient's knee we use to fix the uh, meniscus. And this is how it looks like on the arthroscopy. Arthroscopy is very, very um, useful and important type, important treatment for the meniscus. In the arthroscopy, what do we have to do is just to remove the part of the meniscus, not complete meniscus, because meniscus is still uh, functioning. We still have meniscus. We still have to use the meniscus, the rest of the meniscus. We should not remove the healthy part of the meniscus. Okay? And this is picture showing how big should be the uh, removing of the part of the meniscus depending upon the type of the injury. Okay, you see the radial injury, oblique injury, and longitudinal injury. And all of these injuries with the um, blue, blue line, blue uh, color showing the part of the meniscus which are usually removed. And the second uh, line, the red line, is the line of the injury, line, line of the removing. There's again one more technique of the treatment of the meniscus, which is called meniscal suture. Meniscal suture is using to fix the paracapsular injury. Paracapsular. If the patient's mm, longitudinal tear of the meniscus is closer to the central part, it is not possible to treat by the sutures. 
Complications can be joint instability, osteoarthritis, atrophy of the muscles, and stiffness of the joint. So let's do the last topic, ankle injuries. Please look at this picture and see the medial side of the ankle and lateral side of the ankle. In the medial side of the ankle, we may be having the uh, problem in the medial the, uh, deltoid ligament. In the lateral part, we may have the problem with the anterior talo, talo, uh, and the, um, fibular talar ligament, posterior uh, talofibular ligament, and uh, calcaneal fibular ligament. These are the uh, blood supply and innervation. This is the anatomy. And this is the pulse pulsation of the artery. And I hope you know how to check the pulse pulsation of the um, dorsal artery of the foot. Why it is important? Because we have to understand whether the uh, whether the uh, artery was injured before the foot. And if the artery was injured, in this case, we have a chance of necrosis. And this is the ligament which I mentioned before. This is the ligament which I mentioned before. And these are the ligaments which can be also injured. And this is not including the talus, okay? Not the ankle joint, but superiorly to the ankle joint. A ligament injury to the ankle can be uh, as a result of the twisting force and the ligaments uh, can be injured like uh, sprain, strain and complete injury. And this is the degrees. Stretch, incomplete and complete. Do you remember the uh, do you remember the ligament injuries in the knee? It's just like the same. Okay, first, second, and third degree. Depending upon the class, I mean, the stability can be also classified, but you don't have to cover and you don't have to know this. But for the general uh, picture, you can cover. What are the signs of signs and symptoms? Can be the clinical feature. Uh, instability, uh, pain, swelling, and uh, instrumental investigation can be ultrasound, CT scan, and MRI. Treatment can be non-surgical and surgical. The fractures, okay, let's do the fractures. Duputren fracture. Uh, please don't take Duputren, just the fracture. fracture. Duputren is post-Soviet Union term. What Langhausen classification is a modern classification. Please remember this name, okay? Langhausen classification rather than Duputren classification. Right. Langhausen classification is very important, and this is what the Western countries usually cover. And um, clinical feature uh, so is treatment, non surgical, non surgical. Okay, that's it. This is the last uh, slides which I'm showing you the type of the fixation. And also I would ask uh, the group leaders of all seven semester to send me the list of the students, okay? Um, the dean officer is requiring to fill the uh, registers and not only the practice class registers, but also the lecture registers. And uh, if the group leaders can contact me and one by one, I can meet with them and then uh, make the signature on uh, register, which is, uh, and also uh, group leaders, please contact me and I will be sharing with you the uh, materials uh, for the seven semester lectures only 
And also, I already sent you the link from the Telegram channel, which you, all the lectures are available and uh, some some extra uh, information that like like a documentary will be also shared with, with the group, group leaders. Okay. And today we have just covered the uh, topics of the lower limb injuries. Okay, lower limb. Uh, for this uh, one hour of time, maybe one and a half an hour, we have covered all the lower limb. But if you have any questions during the uh, preparation for the practice classes, please feel free to contact either me or your uh, practice class teacher. And uh, uh, probably we have to meet again, uh, maybe the next week, maybe the... Uh, the end of the week, but uh, we have to meet again to uh, discuss the congenital disorders, some maybe this, uh, um, deformities of the spine. And we include all of these topics in into one lecture, okay? In order to read three, four lectures, we have to make only one, and then it will be covering everything. But you have to, if you didn't, didn't understand, we can make uh, some 